Hello, my friend. It's such a privilege to welcome you to the International Association of the Healing Ministries Conference Present 2020. It's just historic. We should be normally in Porto, Portugal. We rent a large stadium over there. But regarding this COVID-19, we had to cancel it. Uh, but we are so happy because today it's going to be much more powerful because more than 70 healing ministries are coming together for this next four days. We started this morning. It was so powerful to see these different ministries. We started with David Wagner, a powerful prophet. We had Catherine Umala, who actually will join us for this time together. We, will, we had Thierry Kopp from France, John Maylor, powerful healing evangelist, uh, uh, Pastor Young from Singapore, Tim Hall, uh, Ben Fitzgerald. Well, we had so many people, Kenneth Copeland preach as well. And uh, today it's a great joy for me to welcome you for this special live healing talk show. I would love to welcome first my twin brother who is in the Netherlands. Uh, I don't know if you can see me. We are experiencing the technique. Uh, yes, Mateus, can you see you me? Well, yes, welcome, Matteo. It's, so it's so good to have you, and we're going to experience a powerful time now. I let you introduce the speakers of this morning, and I let you lead this precious time. Fantastic. Go ahead, Jean-Luc. Oh, okay. You want to introduce the speakers? <laughs> I can do that. Uh, first, we have Catherine Rumala, who is from Australia. She is a powerful healing ministry. Many people say that she is like Catherine Kuhlman, and it's a great privilege to have you with us, Catherine. Yes. We have Thierry Kopp. I don't know if they solved the technical problem, but he's here hearing us. I don't know if he can see us with the video now. He is a man from France having a strong healing and deliverance ministry. Welcome, Thierry, even if we don't see you now, but we are so glad your preaching was great this morning. We have the evangelist John Mailer from Australia. Uh, recently, I heard about how God is using him in a powerful way. And this morning, I saw his teaching. All of you, you need to go to look this teaching this morning. It was so powerful with so much faith and uh, uh, the anointing. We had also Pastor Young that I want to welcome. I know Pastor Young since a few years as we are part of the same network with Bill Johnson. But this morning, I saw the fire of the Holy Ghost upon him and with such authority as well. So welcome, Pastor Young from Singapore. And uh, we have uh, Tim Hall from Australia. It seems that this morning we are starting with the people who are already in the evening. So the Australian friend. Uh, so welcome, Pastor Tim. He has many decades of experience in the healing ministries. Uh, and finally, we have my great, very good friend, the mission from Australia, living in Europe, Ben Fitzgerald, who is in charge of Awakening Europe. He's part of the core team of Europe Shall Be Saved. And most of the time, we are traveling, doing things together. And we are glad to have you, Ben, as well. Now, I let Matthews lead this time. If he can connect with us, he's going to ask a few questions. And before the end of this uh, show, we're going to pray for the sick. Uh, also, I want to say for all those who don't speak English, uh, please go to the YouTube. You have 10 different languages, uh, Hindi, Italian, uh, Portuguese, uh, and Francais. For those who speak Francais, go to YouTube and you will find all the links. And those who are watching, please don't forget to register to healing-ministries.org to have all the information. You will receive free materials, free gifts, but also all the links to hear the speakers and receive healing songs, many things that we want to offer you. Matt, please bring us to God's glory with all this group. What a great start and what a great morning. Welcome everyone again to Presence 2020. Again, you heard already, this time not in Portugal, but now all over the world. It's so amazing what God has done this morning. Uh, watching all the teachings, I felt like the power of the Holy Spirit. And what an incredible opportunity to come into your homes right now. So welcome to Presence 2020. And the coming 50 minutes will be very powerful. What I do believe is that through the speakers who are with us today in this coming 50 minutes, 
you will receive some powerful tools. So this morning, the Lord showed me a toolbox. In the coming 50 minutes, the Lord is giving you, through our friends who are with us this coming uh, 50 minutes, powerful tools in the area of healing. And I want to start with you reading Exodus 23, verse 25. When Jean-Luc was just talking, I really felt that the Lord wanted me to read the scripture. Worship the Lord, your God. And that's what we're doing this coming three, four days. We are worshiping the Lord. And his blessing will be on your food and water. His blessing will be up on your life, wherever you're watching from right now. And then it says, I will take away sickness from among you. So even right now, while we are doing this live show, and our speakers will give you some very important tools in their lives to see powerful healings, I do believe that sickness will be taken away from you. And none will miscarry or be barren in your land. I will give you a full life span. So wherever you're watching from, I do believe that in this corona time, the Lord wants to do a super natural, Amen. powerful breakthrough upon your life, what's affecting your family and your business. And before we're going to listen to our dear friends, I want to read with you Psalm 103, verse 2 to 3. Praise the Lord, my soul. That's what we do in this whole presence 2020. We are praising the Lord. And then, and forget not all of his benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases. Amen. So again, thank you, uh, the Catherine and Cherry and John and Pastor Young and uh, Pastor Tim and Ben are here with us. And I really want to start with, with Catherine. And, and what we want to do is we want to give you a tool from every speaker, a tool for a breakthrough in the area of healing. And not only in your own life, but we do hope that when you receive all these tools, you're going away in this session with a toolbox what you can use to start to heal other people. So again, Kathleen, thank you so much for joining us. And uh, uh, can you give us, Catherine, a, a tool what really helped in your life when it comes to healing? Oh, it's so good to be able to be here. You know, for me, I feel it's so important that we understand the will of God for healing. F.F. Bosworth used to say, faith begins where the will of God is known. And when we know that it is absolutely the will of God to heal, we can have confidence that when we go to heal the sick, when we go to lay hands on them, we can have confidence that he will do what he's promised. But we don't have confidence just in a concept or a, a promise of itself. We have, a, we have confidence because we know him. You know, I believe everything that we do, faith, everything that we do flows out of relationships. And it's through knowing him that we can have confidence that he'll do what he says. And I believe that, you know, the heart of God for all of us is to recognize that healing isn't about a formula. I searched for years uh, as a young, young woman looking for what's the cool, what's the tool, what's the key? Oh, God, show me the key. I'd, I'd read all the healing revivalists and I'd hear about their baptism was a fire. So I cried out, Lord, baptize me with fire. And he did, which is awesome. But then I'd read, what is it? What is it? What is it? What's the key? What's it? What's the, what is it, Lord, to see? I want to see the miracles of Jesus in my life. And I get so stirred up seeing little kids in wheelchairs. And, and I'd, I'd actually... Um, have to pull aside sometimes in the shopping centers just to cry and say, God, it's not okay that I can have so much compassion and yet feel so powerless. But, you know, I, I've discovered that the power of God isn't in a key. It's not in um, even in an understanding. It is in him. You know, the Bible says I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. But in the Greek, that word through actually means positioned at rest. In other words, when I am comfortable on my father's lap, when I'm comfortable knowing and having confidence that he is for me, that he is with me, that he is in me, he is upon me, and that I am in him, then out of that comes the confidence to know that he will do whatever I ask. You know, when Jesus was talking about the Father, 
he said, you know, when he went to go and raise Lazarus from the dead, he said, I, I don't ask this for them. I, I don't ask this for me because I already know that you hear me, but I want them to know that you hear me. And to have that level of confidence only comes from a developed relationship. Amen. And in knowing him, in learning what it looks like to live in daily fellowship with the Holy Spirit, in daily fellowship with this one who speaks to us personally, speaks words of love, speaks words of kindness. Out of that, we can have confidence that when we go to pray for the sick, oh. we're not giving it a go and hoping something will happen, but we can actually move with a holy boldness that comes from knowing I'm forgiven, I'm loved, I'm received, I'm accepted, I'm in him, he's in me. Amen. My God, we can speak to the mountain and it will move. <laughs> Hallelujah. So for me, that is the key, is relationship, it's knowing him. Amen. Wow, Catherine, that's that was powerful. Actually, I really feel the presence of the Lord, what you just shared. And I, th I think you're so right when we say we want to have keys, but maybe we should use the word, not what was your revelation about the area of healing. So thank you so much for sharing uh, your heart with us. And in the end of this live talk show, we're going to pray together and release uh, the revelations the Lord has uh, given all of us in the area of healing. Ben, I have a, a question to you as well. Uh, how did you start um, really receiving a revelation about healing? Well, when I was first saved, by the way, it's great to see you, Matthias, and uh, all of you, and all of you watching. And uh, when I was first saved, I didn't have um, the privilege of having something like YouTube like this or anything else. I just had my Bible. And uh, I begin to see by reading um, pretty consistently, like four or five hours a day, because I'd just come out of a very dark life. So all I had really was my, the Word of God. It was just life to me. So when I read it, I saw the disciples, they did exactly what Jesus did. So the first experiences for me of healing were very innocent in the sense of I didn't really know what I was doing. And it was really great that I didn't, because all I had to go with was what the Word of God says. And I remember one time I walked into a, actually a furniture store, and I saw this woman there. And, uh, and she had this big thing around her foot, you know, like a boot kind of thing. And, and I said, what's wrong with you? And I, I was only probably six months saved. And she said to me, she said, well, I have this um, thing on my foot. And she said, they're going to cut off part of my foot. And I said, oh, I said, well, I know someone who can heal you. And I said, you don't have to have that happen. And uh, I said, I'm going to pray for you. And I know Jesus will do this because I just had that similar kind of assurity that Catherine was talking about. I read the scriptures. I saw that Jesus gave the disciples all power to heal the sick. Everybody who came to Jesus, when he commissioned them to go, he didn't just say go and hope this happens. He gave them literally his authority. And that's what I thought. I thought I'm a disciple, which means I have his authority. It was really simple for me. And I came back anyway. I prayed for her. She wasn't a Christian. I came back a month later into that store and she came running towards me. And the reason she came running is because this tumorous growth on her foot was completely gone. And that was in the first six months of my walk with Jesus. Right, so okay. then I learned, I was like, oh, well, this is for, not just for that one time, I'm going to do this now all the time. Everybody who I meet who's sick, I can give this same power of healing and Jesus will do the same thing. So for me, it came down to a question of just simple scripture. Uh, I just read it and I believed what I read and I still believe what I read. And I think that if we would return to just that simple, very innocent place of putting our hands on people and not trying to kind of cause power to shoot out of us, but actually putting our hands there, knowing we're in the will of Jesus. He will cause his authority and his anointing to flow when we begin to do that, even if we see an immediate result or not. Sometimes it says, you know, they shall recover. Sometimes there's a process of recovery. But I, I have that feeling in my spirit, Matt, that when I put my hand on them, that God is going to do this, not Ben. And that has been the mo I've seen much more breakthrough when I keep my, my uh, thinking very innocent and very simple that way. Amen. Thank you, Ben. That's so powerful. It's, it reminds me about, I think we all share uh, same mama, Mama Heidi Baker. And uh, she keeps saying it as well, you know, be that little child, being fully depending and look what the Lord has given you in your hands. And the little faith you have will move mountains. So thank you so much, Ben, for, for this amazing experience you had and, and willing to share it with us. Also, like I was thinking this week about this live talk show and I really felt the Holy Spirit 
wanted me to ask a question. And um, it was a question actually to myself first. And that's what I really do believe is that God wants to raise up the banner and the standard for his healing power into the church again worldwide to 100%. That's right. What do I mean with that? Many times, you know, even in my life, the last few five years, you know, I was happy when I saw two, three people getting healed when we were prayed out of the 10. And uh, the Lord really confronted me just the last two, three weeks in preparation of this healing conference. And maybe the ones who are watching at home, maybe you experienced that same... Uh, knocking from the Lord on your heart that he wants to raise up the standard when it comes to healing. What, I'm, what do I mean with that? I was, I was in a way happy, you know, that three, four out of the 10 were getting healed. But I do believe that the Lord wants to raise up the banner and the standard for 100% healing. Amen. And so I want to ask um, Pastor John, uh, thank you so much. Thank you watching so much. All watching from Australia, all from Australia. Uh, to ask the Holy Spirit to give you faith. Faith, so that you can take that bungee step of faith at some point in your life and you say, God, no more medication. I'm going to trust you. Because when we are willing to take that bungee step of faith, something is released in the supernatural. So in the name of the Lord Jesus, I rebuke, Lord, I rebuke every power of the enemy, every fear, and I release, Lord, your healing power over the people that are watching in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I feel so very you, strongly, if, if Mateus. If you are that person, you just got healed, just let us know. Email right now, uh, but also you can leave your comment in the chat on YouTube, on Facebook, and leave your testimony mm. there because your testimony will really encourage other people to believe and have faith for the same. Well, we have four Australian people in this beautiful uh, live talk show, so that's amazing. And I want to ask uh, Tim Hall, thank you so much for joining us uh, again. Um, what is your revelation about, about healing uh, and what would you love to share with us today? Um, well, I think in the area of healing, I, I, I was um, touched by God when I first got saved. I saw the power of God. I saw the anointing of the Holy Spirit being poured out and something within me said, I have to... Uh, carry that. I have to move in that. I've got to take that anointing. I didn't want an ordinary life. And I began to enter in a lot of fasting as a young man out seeking God. And there are two things, I think, in the area of healing that are significant. It's said of Jesus that the people asked the question, they said, where did he get this power? Who is this man? And where did he get this power and this authority? And, uh, and I believe in the area of healing, we need the two things. We need the, the, the dunamis power, but it's got to come from a base of authority. And uh, people understand when we're preaching, they know if we have authority or not. They pick it up. When you're praying for someone, they can look in your eye and know if you've got faith for them to be healed or not. And so they, they are really working with you. So uh, for me, the, the beginning days, there was a passion to fast, and I still do. I still get away um, I used to go out for 20 days or more out in the bush and just uh, lock myself out there with God and just seeking to really move in a dimension of power and uh, which prepared me for mass crusades that we've done around the world. But then in the area of authority, he began to speak to me very strongly about knowing where we're coming from. And he began to speak to me and said, when you go and prepare yourself in prayer, um, don't just go for prayer, but come into the throne room, come into that place, um, which is the place of eternal dominion and power, uh, because when you operate out of that base, you come into a place of dominion over every devil, every disease, and everything that's raised up against God. And so when I go out for prayer, and I go out in the bush as often as I can, when I pray, I don't want to just pray I come and I say, Lord, I'm coming into the throne room of dominion. I'm coming into the place where the Father turned to the Son and said, let's create a universe. I'm coming into the place where the Father turned to the Holy Spirit and said, Holy Spirit, go down. This is the day of Pentecost. And so we have bold access in prayer to go into that place from which eternal decisions are made. And it's a place of fire and you catch what's in there. It's a place of thunderings and lightnings. And I think when we're in the throne room of God in prayer, in fasting and prayer and locking ourselves in that lightning of God and that 
divine flash of power becomes part of what we do. So when we get up and preach, we don't just preach, but there's a thundering of the anointing. There's a flash of the divine lightning that John G. Lake spoke of. He said, mm. we burn this thing out by the lightning fires of God. And so I consciously, if I'm going out for 10 days or uh, whatever, when I get there, I say, Lord, I'm not here for prayer. I'm here to step in with boldness into the place of eternal dominion. And I want to walk out of here into the next crusade I'm doing, into the next series of meetings. Um, I want to step in and operate straight from this place of being seated in heavenly places far above all rule, all power, all dominion, all disease, mm. so that when I step into the pulpit, I'm operating out of a place of eternal dominion. And I think uh, the devil knows when we're in that place. He knows when we're moving in that place. He knows when we're operating in deliverance. Uh, he, he knows that we know. And I think um, there's no shortcuts, I don't believe, to really living in tremendous power and tremendous authority it, it takes, well, the power comes out of hunger That's and the dominion comes out of intimacy with him and spending that time in the secret place. And I think I want to operate in both areas. I want to, I want, well, they both come together, but I want to carry tremendous power. When I step on the platform, I want everybody in that congregation to be very aware that there's something so supernatural already happening. And then when I speak, I want to speak in such a way that the, the demons of the place understand and the people pick up and feel in your voice, just in the sound of your voice and the, the tenor of your voice, that you're not coming just with words, but you're coming uh, with something. Jesus said, the words that I speak, they are spirit and they are life. And we are speaking from a place of authority. So I guess for me, I constantly hunger to be uh, full of power and moving in tremendous authority. I guess they're the, the areas that I've built my time with the Lord on over 46 years and crusades all over the world. It's been exciting, but I want to stay in that fresh place. Yeah. Amen. Thank you so much, Tim. What a wisdom and a revelation all the way from Australia. Amazing how this works. Thank you so much again. If you just tuned in into Presence 2020, you're watching a live talk show about the area of healing. We talk about healing with people who actually experienced for a very long time when they started like like you and me like like, like normal ordinary people they step out in faith uh, and saw the power and the move of god and if he can use us he can use you and we're going uh, to ask some questions about that later on in this talk show a revelation for me was years ago when i uh did my crusades uh, campaigns in myanmar and uh, my spiritually twin brother jean-luc came there to join me uh, a revelation for me in the area of healing was the, the role of angels when it comes to the healing ministry. Uh, I saw Jean-Luc operating in that area. That was a, a new experience for me. So Jean-Luc, can you share a little bit more about the role of angels uh, in, in your life, but in, in all our lives when it comes in, to the area of healing? This is very interesting. Well, thanks for asking me this question. I'm surprised I was not supposed to answer the question, but I will gladly do it. Uh, the first things I encourage the people to seek first Jesus, uh, to seek God, not to seek the other things, uh, which is very important. Uh, uh, not seeking signs and wonders, but seeking God, seeking His face, seeking His presence, uh, uh, being hungry of Him, and that's the major key. And all the things has to be in line up with the Word of God. Now, regarding the angels, of course, the Bible is speaking very clearly about the angels. Uh, even the pool of Bethesda, you had these healing angels there. And personally, uh, since my early age, I had experience with the, the angels. Uh, and uh, uh, when, the hand, when the angels are active, uh, I can see an increase of healing. I cannot explain everything, but one thing that I see, because I'm a seer, I see them coming in the meeting, and especially I have a big angel, and that's when I have a lot of word of knowledge, is coming with a big package, like a gift, like a Christmas gift. And I just wait that he's opening that. And when it's the presence of God is strong, it's like the angel opened this, this box of full of gift, and he just give this way, like he's taking the gift and he's giving to the people. And my 
participation there is to take the gift because I see it and I can bring to the people and that's coming from the Lord. So I really believe the healing angels or the angels are there to serve us. And especially in this season, as it is the harvest time, we need the help of the angels because the harvest is huge. We have to preach the gospel. We have to preach that Jesus is the savior, the healer and the deliverer. But the angel will help us, will serve us. And I have so many testimonies where the angels did amazing things. Also, maybe one of the things I, which I cannot explain, I received some testimonies of people who get healed at the hospital saying, thank you so much, Jean-Luc, that you came to visit me and pray for me. I'm totally healed. And actually, God is my witness. I've never been to these people. I've never been to the hospital. So I believe the supernatural world is so real. Jesus is real. The Holy Spirit is real. And the angels are real helping us to bring the gospel and also to bring healing. Thank you so much, John Luke. Actually, what I really feel right now, I don't know if, if the group who was part of this talk show feels the same, but I really believe that, that uh, in, in some minutes we really should pray together yes. for you and, and release revelation, release the revelation yes. the Lord is giving us. But more important is that we do believe that there is way more. There is way more about the area of healing what God wants to do. Yes. He wants to pour out like more faith. He wants to pour out more creativity. He wants to uh, really release more revelation. Because if this God's will, that He wants to heal 100%, and we get it, we get that revelation, we all sh should go after that. Uh, and, and a testimony I have, I, I, we love testimonies, is that just a couple of uh, months ago, we were in a, a very small gathering uh, in, uh, in Nijkerk. It's a little place here in Holland. And just doing the worship of a huge a, family, a huge in, family, and they just uh, heard that there was a uh, a night of worship, and not really specific healing. Uh, they drove for almost two hours. They saw something on Facebook. This mom was desperate, and she brought her son. And her son, uh, his name is Yetro, and he was full of cancer. And uh, the husband was in America for a specific medication, but the doctors didn't give any hope anymore to Yetro, and he was just 16 years old. And I believe with this testimony, the Lord wants to do something for those you are watching, you're dealing with cancer. And, uh, and, and Yetro was desperate, like he was full of cancer. They, they were willing even to cut off one of his legs, so he had a little bit uh, longer to live. And just in the atmosphere of worship, in, in the presence of the Lord, we really felt just to do a short altar call for those who were sick. And uh, he came forward, his mother was in tears, he brought his sisters, he brought his brothers, nephews, the whole family line was there. But they were desperate, so desperate. Mm. And in that desperation, Jesus touched the life of, of Yetro. Uh, he felt the power of God, and two weeks later, he went back to the doctors. There were many sp uh, special uh, doctors uh, uh -huh. ar ar around him, and they could not find any cancer anymore because they had to do some other scans again before they were taking off his legs and stuff and and they said we don't know what's going on here but he's he's completely healed there's no wow. cancer anymore Thank and, and i you. love that you know and i believe that with this testimony even though you know it was not like a specific healing service we should we should always be be ready uh, for the atmosphere of faith Amen. And, and and release that into the, the lives of the people and maybe we can do this. Are there in this group maybe two short testimonies of recent healings you saw in, in your life? To the group who was in this beautiful live talk show. For the last yeah. two to experience a great healing. Yeah, recently um, we were doing an interview over Instagram Live. And I think this one is good for people watching because we can't get to you with our hands right now, but we can get to you in faith, the Lord and his anointing will touch you where you are. And uh, someone said on Instagram Live, would you please pray against, um, uh, for my sister, she's in a coma. She's been in a coma in Germany and I'm here in Australia. And so we just said a simple prayer. We put our hands to the screen in Jesus' mighty name. And I had this revelation as I'm praying that it's a spirit of death over the girl's life. She's a mother of a new child. She's been in the coma uh, for some time. And completely, like her heart stopped, all this crazy stuff happened. And she had a brand new baby. I think she had a couple of kids. And so we just prayed. So she can't hear us praying. She can't hear anything. Um, but her sister's there in the room. 
And we just started to pray, but in the middle of it, I felt this revelation, it's the spirit of death. So, and that's another thing about healing of sickness. Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil, which is directly a correlation of sickness. I mean, no one would ever give their child sickness. We've accused, I think, sometimes God of the devil's job and the devil God's job that, you know, we, we've flipped this thing around. The enemy is the one who brings sickness to people, destruction, death. Mm. And so anyway, I just said, in Jesus' name, I command the spirit of death to leave her life. Now, I'm in Australia. This only testifies to the authority of the name of Jesus. And it's so easy, no matter where you are watching from today, guys, to receive healing based on who he is and what he's already purchased for you. Well, this woman who was in the coma, the woman holding the phone was the sister. She felt something go past her. The sister felt that. And then two hours later, that woman who was in a coma woke up out of the coma. But she immediately felt something go past. And that was the anointing. That was the presence of God in that room just immediately transferred from, you know, the Holy Spirit's in Germany too, from Australia to Germany. And he's right here wherever you are from wherever we are. And, uh, and so that woman woke up out of the coma, and I believe she's still out of the coma, completely Praise healed God. today. And that was just uh, three weeks ago. So I'm praising God for his authority um, that through any believer, if they really have faith and use his name in faith, you know, we can see that the most crazy diseases and crazy torments heal even over FaceTime or over something like this. Amen. Amen. That's so powerful. Thank you, Ben. Is there from the group another one who really wants to share a testimony about what you experienced recently? San Diego. Uh, oh, sorry. You go ahead, Tim. I was in San Diego um, a little while back before we got shut down, and I love to see children healed. I, I don't know about you, but I, I really get a kick out of seeing little kids get healed. And uh, there was a little boy in the meeting. He was about 10 years of age, and he had a stroke when he was seven. And I, I'd never heard of kids having a stroke, uh, especially a seven-year-old. And he had one arm that just hung loose and limp on the side. And, uh, and he wanted to, desperately wanted to work with a camera at the church. He wanted to film, and um, his passion was really to be involved in the media team and but he could only work with one hand and the other one just hung dead. And um, we gathered around him and the group, we started to pray for him and took him by the hand and you started to feel that life coming back and um, his hand came free and the paralysis went. That night he was on the camera with both hands there and um, healed by the power of God. And that's the glorious thing that... Um, uh, children get healed. We've seen a couple of little babies raised from the dead in the meetings, and, uh, and God is extraordinary, isn't he? I mean, uh, that but that one with that little boy was just really special. Thank you, Tim. That's yeah. very uplifting. That's very encouraging. So I really want to encourage you before we're going to end this this live uh, stream, this live show. We continue, of course, with the live stream. Uh, get your children around around your device, and we really want to. Uh, release healing and faith right now uh, over your children in a couple of minutes. We're going to pray over yeah. your children. Uh, so, Catherine, you wanted to share something. Thank you so much. Sorry, no, I, I cut you hearing, off. Oh, I love hearing those Sorry. testimonies. And God is God is so powerful and it's so, so wonderful. But I wanted to just share, just one to encourage people as we're watching online. You know, we love to be able to, to be live and to see the fireballs go out over the crowds. But there is no distance in prayer. That's true. And I was just reminded as we were talking, uh, by the way, Jean-Luc, I loved those stories. But I was reminded as we were talking um, of being in a meeting where God was just moving with such power, notable miracles were happening, and a gift of faith just came in the room. Uh, but this couple came forward and they actually interrupted the meeting, which is unusual. Um, but they were desperate and they said, please, will you pray for our son? And I didn't know what was wrong with their son. They simply said he was in the hospital. And I went to pray for him. And I just felt this strong um, sense of intercession come over me. And the Lord just took me into a vision. And I actually saw myself go to the hospital, lay hands on him, and, and declare healing. Well, we found out later that he had um, end-stage lymphoma, young man, but end-stage lymphoma with tumors all through his body and at that very moment he was instantly healed wow. um a little while later his family came and they told me they found me at another meeting and they said 
do you remember us? And I didn't remember them. They said, our son, he was healed of lymphoma. But I was so encouraged. I have still never met him. Mm. But there is no distance in prayer because the power of God. And the other thing is, you know, those parents, they were seeing God move. They were hearing the testimonies and they, they had faith. And just asking is more than enough faith. You know, the friends brought the lame man to Jesus. Their faith, just bringing him to Jesus, was more than enough. And so I just want to encourage people tonight, as you're involved in the conference or today, I really want you to believe that just asking is enough, is evident, enough evidence of faith for God Amen. to be able to touch you, heal you powerfully. Amen. That's powerful. Thank you so much. I want to ask Tim, are you willing to release a prayer of healing over children and teenagers? Absolutely. And uh, I, I always encourage people to put their hand on the sick part of their body. And uh, then as we're praying or immediately after, just start to do something you couldn't do. Mm -hmm. Test that thing or take a step or lift your shoulder. Um, so I'm going to get people to stand around and say look come on do this start to move start to test your faith start to do something you couldn't do and so um right now if you as you're watching just put your hand on that sick part of your body maybe an arm that's been damaged or even a broken bone or a broken leg or a foot or whatever it is and as we pray believe the power of god and then start to act it say come on start to take some steps Start to move your arm, start to move your back, start to bend, test it, and, uh, and God will touch. But it, faith has an action. Yes. So I'm going to pray. So put your hand on the sick part. Remember, faith without an accompanying action is dead, being itself alone, James 2.26. And so something's going to happen in your body right now. Something's about to happen for you. Here it is. Father, in the authority we unite together, each of us here right now, you, each of us online, unite our faith. Yeah. Father, we don't come. It's just not me here. It's a group of us uniting and where two or three agree, the faith is there. We come together as one voice right now. We come together as a group of people in agreement saying right now, right at this moment of time, Father, let your healing power go through their body. Mm -hmm. Let your healing power go straight through like a fire. Let the fire of the Holy Ghost, the burning lightnings of heaven, flash into sick bodies right now. And Lord, let healing come right, right now. Right now, we rebuke pain. We rebuke broken bones. We take authority. We command things to be restored. We command muscle to come back. back. Yes. My God, right through their body now in Jesus' name. And now do something you couldn't do. Start to move it. Start to test it. Lift it. Lift that arm. Move that leg. Do something you couldn't do. The power of God's on you right now. You may not have experienced anything yet, but start to move. Start to move. People get healed as they act. Start to act your faith and take your healing right now. Right now. Move it. Receive it. In Jesus' name, it's yours. It's a gift. Thank you, Lord. It's his gift. Jesus, so please, right now, test it out and let us know. Let us know through the chat, through YouTube, through Facebook, through email, what the Lord is doing right now. Catherine, I really feel that uh, you um, you have something what you really have to release over the people right now. Are you willing to release a prayer of healing? Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you, Jesus. Uh, look, I just so agree with what Tim said. Put your hand on the part of your body that needs healing. When I was just 14, that was where I experienced my first healing. I'd severed a nerve to my thumb and couldn't move it. And uh, I was in a healing meeting. They said, put your hand on the party body that needs healing. They prayed a simple prayer. And then, praise the Lord, I was instantly healed. So right now, in the name of Jesus, Amen. I thank you for faith. Whoa. Mother, thank you, Holy Spirit, that you touch and that you heal. In the name of Jesus, that you've given them so unbelievable. And I thank you for the healing touch. Jesus, thank you, Lord, that your angels are there now, and I thank you for your presence, healing. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Wow, that's powerful. Amen. Lord, is there any one of the speakers you have a revelation right now, like a short word? We have uh, three minutes left. Thank you, Lord. 
Well, I want to really just to pray for what has been shared regarding the angels. I really believe that all the viewers, they need that. Uh, I pray, Holy Spirit, that you can touch all those who are watching, the ministries, the workers, the business people, anybody who are believing in Jesus. I pray that you can open their spirit to the supernatural world and that they can be aware of the angels. We release, I release what I carry to all those who are watching in the name of yes. Jesus, that they can see what God is doing through the angels, through the gifts, through the power of the Holy Spirit. We release this presence over you right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank, Thank you. you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for all the testimonies. And you know, if you are watching, and we're going to close with this. This is very important. If you are watching, and I think the biggest miracle, what can happen today, right now in your home, wherever you're watching, mm. is the fact that if you don't know Jesus or you're not sure if you, uh. if you die, if you close your eyes on this earth and you open your eyes, where do you open your eyes? Mm. And this is not fear-based. This is totally love-based. And through the whole day, and especially tonight, uh, we will explain to you the ABC of the gospel. So invite friends who don't know Jesus through this yes. live channel right now. But if you're watching, yes. you're not sure you are safe. You know, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Just a couple of weeks ago, the Holy Spirit led me to go to a real estate. And in that real estate, I was not willing uh, to buy a house, but God was willing to save the soul of the owner. And just with a very short explanation... We asked him, do you want to receive Jesus in your life? And he said, you know what? I, yeah. I, my background is not Christian. I'm atheist. But I'm, I'm searching my whole life for, for yeah. that peace, for that love you're talking about. And if that's Jesus, I want to know him. And he just opened his, his hands. He prayed the prayer. And he received a peace and a love he never experienced in his life before. Uh -huh. and yesterday, we did with him the first Alpha course. He's fully Holy Spirit filled. His life is full of hope. So if you're yeah. that person... You're searching for peace. You're searching for love. You don't know what the way is in your life. There's chaos in your life. There's depression and anxiety. I want to ask you right now just to pray this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the son of God. And I yes. believe that you died for my sin. And I believe that you rose up again. And today I choose to follow you. Come into my life. And I experience your love. I experience your Holy Spirit right now. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus, that all my sin are forgiven. And thank you for Hallelujah. eternal life. Jesus, I love you. And Jesus, my life belongs to you. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Sean Luke. Well, thanks Amen. so much, guys, for this precious time. Let's keep in touch. We can meet tonight for those who can at 8 p.m. We're going to have these miracles and healing service. But also all during the day, we have this healing rally. And at 5 p.m., a special face-to-face -face with Randy Clark. At 6, another Healing Life Roundtable with Mateus and so many more guest speakers. Thanks so much. May the Lord bless you. Don't forget to register to healing-ministries.org. Bless you.